Okay, how is everybody doing? I want to do something else in geometry, um, and this is a big deal. I have actually been tutoring a few students, and one of the biggest things in geometry that students seem to need help with are proofs, and there are proofs all through geometry. So we're going to start with some of the more basic ones when we're just proving um, things with angles and parallel lines. And of course, later on, you're going to do proofs with triangles and such, but the, the thought process is very similar. Um, you have to, and these are two column proofs. Um, you have to basically look at what's given. Um, I hope that everybody knows the uh, notation here. This is a parallel. L is parallel to M, and this means congruent. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 7, and I'm trying to prove that A is also parallel to B. So this is my uh, situation. This is what I'm trying to prove, and this is what's given. So all two column proofs follow this. There's something that's given. There's something that you need to prove. Typically, there's a, a picture, a nice visual, and you have two columns. The leftmost column is what we call the statement, and the rightmost column is the reason that we're making that statement. So you guys have to know your proof, uh, your, your properties, your theorems. You have to make sure you have those down, especially with stuff like this. Um, when we're dealing with angles and parallel lines, you need your alternate interior. You need your um, corresponding. You need to know all those same side interior, same side exterior, alternate exterior. You need to know all these different properties. And what I could do is make a video on that also. But um, once you know those transitive properties, symmetric property, once those are down, then we can go ahead and um, work on these proofs. So every statement that I made that, that I make, there has to be a reason. And you can assume that, or at least you should assume, that you're talking to somebody that knows nothing. They don't know anything. They don't, they don't know what the symbol means. They don't know anything. Um, you have to walk them through each step. So... What I suggest with the two column proof, we're going to do two examples. First of all, with this one, I always start with what's given. So my first statement is always what's given. L is parallel to M, angle 1 is congruent to angle 7, and this is given. I always start with what's given, put that down, and then work from there. Now I want to try to think ahead, of course. Um, I know that these two are parallel. I know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 7 which is nice to know, huh? What do I know about parallel lines? Well, let's see if I could work my way into what I want. I need to work my way into these two becoming parallel. So to prove something like that, I would need to prove, you know, either seven is congruent to four, because then they would be alternate interior angles, that three is congruent to seven, because they're corresponding angles. Um, I need to prove something like that so that I can work my way from here all the way over here and show that A is parallel to B. Because I only have alternate interior angles and things like that when I have two parallel lines and a transversal that goes through them. So I'm going to have to work my way from here to here. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 7. That's good to know. Now, I do know that L and M are, con are parallel, which means that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. A would be my transversal through that, right? If these are parallel, A is my transversal, then 1 and 4 are called alternate interior angles. Agreed? If they're alternate interior angles, then they're congruent. So that's going to be my next step. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. And what's my reason? My reason is because, of course, they tell me that L is parallel to M, which means that 1 and 4 are um, alternate, let's say, definition of alternate interior angles. That's an A-L-T. <laughs> Definition of alternate interior angles. Okay, that's my reason for saying that those are congruent. Now, if 1 is congruent to 4, I'm kind of already where I want to be. Remember I said that one of the things that we could prove, or um, that we would need to prove, is that 4 and 7 are congruent <clears throat> That would help me prove that A and B are parallel, because if A and B are parallel, then 4 and 7 would be alternate interior. So I already have that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, because of the alternate interior angles on L and M. I have that angle 1 is congruent to angle 7 because it was given to me, which means that I can now say that angle 1 is congruent, um, uh, angle 4, whoops, 
is congruent, sorry, to angle 7. I don't remember, I wanted to prove that these two were congruent. Why can I say that? If angle 1 is congruent to 7, and angle 1 is congruent to 4, then these two must be congruent as well. That's actually called a transitive property of congruence. Transitive property of congruence. If A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. If angle 1 is congruent to 7, angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, then 4 and 7 must also be congruent. And therefore, if 4 and 7 are congruent, then A and B must be parallel. And therefore, A is parallel to B. And the reason is because we say it's the converse of the alternate interior angles. Theorem. Interior angles theorem. <clears throat> so... The idea is, with a two-column proof, the first thing that should be written, number one, the statement, the first statement that should be written is always what's given. The last statement that should be written is always what you're trying to prove, and then you have to kind of work your way from here to here. I would never write a statement unless I have a reason to write it, which is a property, a theorem, or whatever, a definition, whatever. If I'm going from, um, notice here that I said, based on these two being parallel lines, one um, and four are congruent, and that was the alter, uh, alternate interior angles theorem or definition. Down here, I'm making the claim that A and B are parallel because of these alternate interior angles, so therefore we say that's the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem. Okay, so again, if I am using parallel lines to prove two angles are congruent and they're alternate interior, that's the definition of it. But if I'm going in the opposite direction and I'm using congruent angles to prove that parallel lines are there, that's the converse. Well, let's look at this one. Let's try this one. First statement is going to be what's given. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and that P is parallel to Q, and the reason is because that's given to me. That's my first statement and my first reason. Now, what do I want to prove? I want to prove that Q is perpendicular to A. Now, I want you guys to, of course, make sure you know that these symbols mean perpendicular, parallel, congruent. This is an angle. Okay, you have to know the symbols. And let's think ahead. Um, I know my goal. I want to prove that Q is perpendicular to A. So here's Q, and I want it to be perpendicular to A. So I know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And I know that P is parallel to Q. And I need to get over here somehow and prove that these two are perpendicular, this and this. So I need to obviously talk about right angles because if I'm talking about perpendicular lines, then therefore there must be a talk about uh, perpendicular angles. So what I'm thinking, one and two, if they're congruent and they're linear pair, they create a line, then they must be 90 degree angles. So I'm gonna write first, that um, angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary. Do we know the definition of supplementary? It means that they add up to 180 degrees. And why is that? Well, they're creating a linear pair, definition of a linear pair. Right? A linear pair, two angles that create a line, are supplementary. They add up to... 180 degrees. So now I can say that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees. And why can I say that? <clears throat> well, that's the definition of supplementary angles. Right? Supplementary angles. Okay? Now, here I am that these two add up to 180 degrees. I need to show that they're 90 degree angles. So here, I'm gonna say that the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle two. Can I say that? I can say that. If angle one is congruent to angle two, then the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle two. And that's the definition of congruent angles. Okay, why did I need to say that? Well, I need to somehow show that one or two 
are 90 degrees. So I'm going to use some math here. I'm going to actually do some substitution. Um, I'm going to take, uh, let's just take, it doesn't matter which one, let's just say 1. I'm going to replace measure of angle 1 with measure angle 2. So up here I'm going to say measure angle 2 plus measure angle 2 is 180 degrees. Well, I can say that because I said that these two are the same, and I'm just basically substituting this in for this. Substitution. Okay. Now, <clears throat> uh, with a little math, if, if twice something is equal to 180 degrees, then each one of them would have to be 90 degrees, correct? So I'm going to write 2 times measure of angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees. And therefore measure of angle 2 is 90 degrees. This is just a little bit of algebra. Okay? I'm doing some algebra to basically um, make that statement. Okay, this is awesome. Because uh, if measure of angle 2 is 90 degrees, then measure angle 1 is also equal to 90 degrees. Now, if measure angle 2 is 90 degrees, then angle 2 is a right angle. I'm running out of space. <laughs> this is the definition of a right angle. How, what does that do for me? What does that do? That allows me to say now that P is perpendicular to A. Definition of perpendicular lines. Right? If angle 2 is a right angle, then P must be perpendicular to A. Now here's my last step. Thank God. Last step. Number 9. <laughs> Um, I'm making the statement that Q is perpendicular to A. This is st statement 9. Q is perpendicular to A. Now, why am I allowed to say that? Okay, so our last reason would be the perpendicular, I'm going to have to just use my symbol, perpendicular transversal theorem, which, if you guys don't know this, it states that if um, one transversal a is my transversal, is perpendicular to one of my parallel lines, then it must be perpendicular to the other parallel line. Right? So if I have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, if this transversal is perpendicular to this guy, then it must be perpendicular to this guy, which makes sense. So we proved that this was a right angle, and therefore this was perpendicular to this, P was perpendicular to A, and because these are two parallel lines, Q must be also perpendicular to A. Okay, so again, first um, statement is always what's given. Last statement is always what I'm trying to prove. And you have to just be careful. Right? First statement is what's given. Last statement is what I'm trying to prove. You just have to be careful going through the steps. Okay, you're not allowed to make a step. Don't assume that anybody knows anything. You have to explain every step that you take. Okay, you have to show all of your work. Explain every step that you take. Nothing can be written unless there is a postulate, property, theorem that says that that's true. Or, you know, some algebraic move that basically allows you to make that statement, okay? So these are just two different examples of two different proofs, two column proofs in particular, dealing with angles um, and parallel lines. And again, you're going to do a bunch of other proofs in geometry, um, and I'll just keep doing some proofs, but the thought process is going to be the same. You practice, practice, practice to get these down. So um, shoot me any comments and let me know if it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, if you guys need more examples, let me know, okay? Because this is a big deal. It's all over geometry, and a lot of students have an issue with it. So if you have a question, somebody else probably does too. All right, guys. Good luck.